I know the internet is a weird place, but this is probably going to be the coolest thing you see today. We're looking at a Weeped electric scooter. That's the company. It's a random South Korean brand. Never heard of them before, but look at what they make. These are by far the most outrageous sci-fi looking scooters I've ever seen. For context, this is a quote unquote normal high performance electric scooter. It's full suspension, goes 60 miles per hour, and has a high capacity 72 volt battery with a price tag of about 4,000 bucks. But even this cannot hold a candle to these scooters. There's not too much content of these scooters online, but they do have an official YouTube channel that's full of just epic videos. I took a few screenshots and I mean, just look at these products. The wheels, the, the frame design, the chrome finish. Here's another just beautiful angle of this bike scooter hybrid thing. You can tell it's powerful just by the thickness of these cables. This is dealing with some serious power. And again, even the chrome finish, the whole thing, even the fenders are shiny chrome. So coming to the official website here, this is one of their scooters. And I mean, the thing looks absolutely wild. The things that really stand out to me are the, the frame design. It's super robust, different looking, and the geometry of the suspension is also quite different and based off of the footage I've seen, quite effective. But aside from the suspension, these fat tires should give you a supple riding experience. They look to be about 14 inches in diameter and at least four to maybe even five inches wide. And I think every high performance scooter should come with wheels like this. They're still not overly huge like a mountain bike wheel, but they give you way more traction and comfort than a regular scooter wheel. And inside of both of those wheels, we have a four kilowatt, extremely powerful hub motor. And they opted for an 84 volt, 50 amp hour battery. As I previously mentioned with the InMotion RS, 72 volt is considered high performance. So 84 is just above and beyond, and that's one of the reasons why the top speed here is listed at a ridiculous 80 miles per hour. Now, in addition to having these high powered scooters, I noticed that for many of these models, the company has a modified seated version as well. Personally, I think these are the ones to get. So for example, this is one of their seated electric scooters slash hybrid bike, whatever you wanna classify this vehicle as. And you can see what they did here is they added a seat and they removed the top part of the handlebar to bring it down to a more appropriate height for seated operation. So when it comes to most electric cars, they're built off of a skateboard design. So the skateboard is the foundation with the batteries, the motor, and then companies can plop on whatever frame they want on top of that to make it into a truck, sedan, what have you. And it's a very efficient modular way to build electric vehicles. And that's essentially what they're doing with these products as well. We have a skateboard foundation, and then they can add either handlebars or handlebars plus a seat to make it into a bike. And that's in contrast to most electric bikes in the market that begin with a bicycle frame and they slap on a battery and a motor. Now this model is twice as powerful as the previous scooter with dual hub motors, each rated at eight kilowatts of power. And the battery is also bigger. It's 84 volts, 100 amp hours. So those specifications mixed with the robust, completely overkill chrome design and the funky suspension, the big wheels, kind of justifies the $16,000 price tag. But this right here is their most expensive, high-end, most capable product they offer. It's a whopping $20,000 and there's both a seated and a standing scooter version. I mean, physically just looking at this scooter bike thing, it's an absolute beast. I don't even know how to classify what kind of vehicle this is anymore. And the specs are just ridiculous. So again, we have dual eight kilowatt hub motors. I don't think there's any point of going above that to like 10 kilowatts per wheel. At some point, you just gotta draw the line and it seems like eight kilowatts per wheel is the line that this company drew. But the battery here, they went all the way up to a nominal 100.8 volts at a capacity of 100 amps. That gives you a total watt hour capacity of over 10,000. That gives you a maximum speed of over 100 miles per hour and a range of 170 miles. So yeah, I just had to show you guys these absolutely insane 
electric vehicles. They're not exactly practical, being that they're so expensive, but I think the company is doing a lot of cool things and demonstrating the, the extreme potential of what micromobility can be. And I would love to see a slightly more toned down model of this that's more affordable and available to the masses. So for example, the battery probably doesn't need to be 100 volts, 100 amp hours, 72 volts, 40 amp hours is still gonna give you all the performance you want. And the battery isn't gonna cost 10,000 bucks in and of itself. I think they're really onto something with their modular skateboard design that allows you to attach handlebars, handlebars plus a seat, along with the bigger than average wheels. Again, they're still much smaller than say a mountain bike wheel, but it's a nice middle ground between that and much smaller, less capable scooter wheels. And when you have this much speed and power, you need more traction and stability, which bigger wheels will give you. And I think one more change that they can do to bring down the cost is to tweak the design a little bit. I mean, I think these things look super cool, robust, but they're probably overbuilt and they could simplify it a little bit to bring down the manufacturing cost and thus pass on cheaper pricing to the end consumer. But let us know in the comments below, what do you think of this modular, super powerful electric scooter bike hybrid thing? If it was a little bit toned down, still had a great performance, was 72 volts and costs around 4,000 bucks, would that be something you guys would then be interested in buying? Let us know in the comments. I'll also leave the link to this company below the video if you guys wanna go check them out. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.